Hi, I'm Hyunjung Jang from Taist in South Korea. In this video, I'll be presenting egocentric scene reconstruction from an omnidirectional video. Nowadays, omnidirectional cameras become popular to capture the whole 360-degree scene effectively. But there are not many 360-degree 3D reconstruction methods yet. Most 3D reconstruction methods are based on regular voxel grids that store signed distance function values in the fixed size voxels. It makes far surfaces require a lot more voxels, even though they project to the same viewing angle. We focused on this problem, especially for scene scale 3D reconstruction from a small camera trajectory. Our approach parameterizes the world as a function of distance and allocates different voxel sizes according to the importance of details. Active depth sensors have been widely used for 3D reconstruction because of their accurate and dense depth sensing capability. However, their limited depth sensing range makes reconstructing outdoor scene scale geometry impractical. On the other hand, 360 degree camera systems can capture scenes with multiple cameras in a passive way, but they are expensive and not portable. For an input video, we first estimate the per-frame camera poses. For better pose accuracy, we estimate camera poses by running OpenVSLAM twice. In the first pass, we reconstruct and save a sparse 3D map. In the second pass, we estimate camera poses based on the 3D map. After finding the per-frame camera poses, we estimate the per-frame depth map. For a target frame, we select neighbor frames first. Then, for each stereo image pair, we convert it into a rectified spherical image pair, such that matching pixels are aligned horizontally. This turns the spherical depth estimation problem into a 1D correspondence matching problem. Then, any correspondence searching method can be applied. In this work, we adopted the raft optical flow network by extracting horizontal flows only. However, the training dataset used for raft does not include 360 degree images. For better depth accuracy, we created a 360 degree RGBD video dataset and fine-tune a pre-trained raft model on this dataset. This is one of our input videos and the corresponding depth maps. Our input video camera trajectories are much smaller than the target scene. and the shape of the camera trajectory is not restricted. It can be circular or any other unconstrained trajectory. After estimating the per-frame depth maps, we accumulate them in our novel data structure called spherical binary. When the depth value is small, it requires high-resolution details so we divide the node many times. On the other hand, when the depth value is large, it does not need high resolution details, so we divide the node less. Each node of the binary tree is subdivided into eight or two children depending on its shape. Hence the name is binoct tree. When we store and update 
TSTF values in the binary tree, we use the marching cubes algorithm to generate a mesh. Marching cubes is the most popular meshing algorithm for TSDF volumes. However, one limitation of the marching cubes is that we can only apply it for the same grid resolution. By storing TSDF values on the dual graph of the binary tree, that is at the center of each binary tree node instead of its corners, we can apply marching cubes directly regardless of the size or shape of nodes. However, the output mesh has a problem. For example, pillars 1 and 2 show incomplete 3D reconstruction. We observed that the depth accuracy and TSDF truncation policy caused this problem. Let's look at the depth map. First, the depth accuracy along the baseline axis is low. We can see this on the left and right sides of rectified images. It is because estimating depth along the baseline axis of a stereo image pair is geometrically impossible. Second, depth estimates of far surfaces are inaccurate, which is caused by a small disparity. Also, the lack of checking depth and color consistency is another problem. We solve the first problem by simply masking out circular regions around the epipoles. To solve the remaining problems, we adjust how much the depth estimates will be involved in the TSDF value update. Less accurate depth estimates from distant points have a small Gaussian weight for TSDF update. And we check depth and color consistency by reprojecting neighbor frames to the target frame and penalize by giving a small weight when they are inconsistent. Moreover, we slightly changed the TSDF truncation policy. We observed that a constant truncation threshold could not handle the increasing depth error in far regions which leads to large holes in the output mesh. To solve this problem, we adaptively increase the truncation threshold as a linear function of estimated depth. This is a result with the constant truncation threshold and without confidence weight. TSDF fusion reconstructs pillars incompletely. When we use a depth-dependent truncation threshold, far surfaces are reconstructed better. It reconstructs pillars more accurately when we use depth-dependent Gaussian weight and confidence weight by checking depth and color consistency with neighbor frames. We are now showing the synthetic reconstruction results. These are input videos rendered with a small camera trajectory. We compare the reconstruction accuracy with the ground truth, call map, and omnislam. Colmap's reconstruction result has many bumpy artifacts, and Omnislam has a limited reconstruction range while our method can output a full 3D mesh. Our method outputs smoother and more accurate results than other methods. Here we show a depth accuracy comparison. Our method shows better depth accuracy than other 360-degree depth estimation networks, stereo matching algorithms, and the vanilla raft optical flow network. This chart shows a memory efficiency comparison. Our binary requires the least number of voxels for both comparison scenes. 
Now we show a comparison of mesh accuracy. We render a depth map from the output mesh at the center of the camera trajectory and compare it with the ground truth. Our method shows the best results. This is a qualitative comparison of real-world scene reconstruction results. We used the same input videos captured with an omnidirectional camera and converted the video to cube maps for Colmap. Colmap's reconstruction contains geometric artifacts and blurry texture information due to the inaccurate reconstruction. In contrast, our method shows high-resolution geometry and texture information. Please refer to our paper for more details about texture reconstruction. Using our output 3D textured mesh, we can achieve relighting effects or day-to-night effects together. We can add a virtual objects such as snowmen or an armadillo. Our method is not free from limitations. It sometimes fails for thin object reconstruction. This is because depth estimates from our fine-tuned optical flow network are not accurate enough for the thin structures. Similarly, specular reflections lead to inconsistent depth estimation, which our passive stereo method cannot handle. To increase depth accuracy, fusion with long-range depth sensors such as LiDAR might be helpful. Finally, our method fails to reconstruct dynamic objects. Removing dynamic objects without masking them manually is a challenging problem because usually the velocity and appearance of the dynamic objects keeps changing. In conclusion, we introduced an egocentric scene scale 3D reconstruction method using a single omnidirectional camera. We created and make available a 360-degree RGBD video dataset and used the dataset for accurate spherical depth estimation. We also presented a spherical binary data structure to parameterize the world as a function of distance and efficiently assign voxels to represent the scene. Our method can reconstruct full mesh even from a short camera trajectory by using an adaptive truncation threshold. For more details, please visit our project website. Thank you for watching this video.